and this is the important news of the day, isn't it? Um, George Floyd, Derek Chauvin has been found guilty, guilty, guilty of murder. Um, I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna be honest. I'm surprised. I would just assume there would have just been a miscarrying of justice, and he would have somehow managed to get away with it. I was also kind of a bit worried when the charges came out, as I thinking, you know, kind of proving without doubt that he chose to basically no proving without reasonable doubt proving without reasonable doubt that he actually intended to end George Floyd's life was going to be very difficult when you consider how kind of dubious and reckless some of the police procedure police procedures are in terms of how they restrain people I just thought they were going to do something to try and wrangle him out of it right but in a real weird twist they've managed to kind of do the right thing and basically convict him for murdering him which he obviously did and in general hopefully kind of just stem the heat a little bit right it felt like um there was going to be a whole host of protests and riots and lootings going off the back of this if he was found not guilty for any of the counts so the fact that they were able just to kind of you know basically sacrifice him in order to kind of restore some level of normality and peace to america for a short period of time especially while stuff is reopening is definitely welcomed and i would imagine for the family too it's a great relief to get some level of closure i'm not quite sure how clo much closure you're actually going to get because you know you see your family member being murdered on tv again and again and again he's kind of deaf being spoken about you know in all corners of the world people are turning his death into an opportunity to grift money make to boost their own career it's just a bit gross to see all the stuff that's going on at the moment and i'm sure for the family to have some level of closure is definitely something that's going to be welcomed and the person that was directly responsible for his death is getting punished not like an institution or somebody else or him getting slapped on the wrist no the actual guy that did it that we all saw on camera is being convicted and i'm sure it would help them get some sort of level of resolution in that this is from bbc it says a u.s jury has found a the former um, police officer guilty of murder over the death of the african-american george floyd on a minneapolis street last year derek chauvin 45 was filmed kneeling on george floyd's neck more than nine minutes during the arrest in night last may the widely watched video footage sparked worldwide protests against racism excessive use of force by police chauvin was found guilty on three counts second degree murder third degree murder and manslaughter his bail was immediately revoked and he was placed in custody sentencing is likely to happen in two months and Chauvin could spend decades in jail so they're saying already 40 years in it plus right in Minnesota second degree murder carries a maximum sentence of 40 years third degree murder is 25 and second degree is 10 and the weird thing about America is that each charge has its own sentence so it gets added on top of it so if he gets those sentences they'll be like what 75 years in prison he'll basically end up getting if if according to what they have here it's insane so it continues um, Chauvin is expected to appeal against the verdict police officers have rarely been convicted and if they are charged fully for deaths that occur in custody and the verdict in this trial has been widely seen as indication that the US legal system will treat such cases in the future um, there are other officers due to face trial later this year on aiding and abetting the charges and that is a really good point to make this definitely does go this definitely does go a long way it's obviously not going to solve racism because that's never going to end unfortunately in my opinion i just think it's one of those unfortunate things we have to just live with and find a way to kind of prosper despite of but what it does do is that it does send a warning message to police officers in the united states who by you know fair enough i don't really agree that they're all racist i don't think that's definitely true it's probably hard to even prove but they're definitely incompetent a large majority of these police officers are really really bad at what they do and if that's the case and some of their incompetency can lead to somebody passing away and losing their life or having a grave injury they definitely need to be held account and i think this sentence what it does do is send a warning and say hey you can't get away with just being very shitty at your job you have to be able to do your job to some level of competency in order to kind of look after your you know um the people that you police in your neighborhood to some level that you're not every interaction doesn't turn into a do or die because that's a thing that's been very perplexing too to see again from outside looking in why every interaction that happens within you know uh communities that are predominantly black and brown it ends so fatally it has to it, and it has to always end that way it can't end in a tussle it can't end in maybe getting shot in the leg it can't end in anything else it always has to end in death it's just so weird very very bizarre but hey what could we do? It continues. What was the reaction? 
The 12 member jury took less than a day to reach the verdict, which followed a highly charged three week trial that left Minneapolis on edge. Several hundred Pe several hundred uh several hundred people cheered outside the court as the verdict was announced the family lawyer um ben chump said it marked a turning point in u.s history so this is um some of the community talking about it too let's play a bit of the video murder while committing a felony find the defendant guilty of april 2021 at 1 44 p.m signed juror four person that's everything. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Same caption. Real tears, man. So we're glad mm -hmm. that we got the verdict. So that starts the process of the healing for some of our community. Yeah. It does not start the process of healing for all, but it starts the process of healing for some to where we can finally breathe just a little bit to know that we got at least somebody in our in our corner to say, we're not gonna stand for this. So thank you for the justice, for the jurors, for the people that showed and stood there and recorded, for the people that got up there and said something and didn't just stand back and keep their mouths closed. Mm. Exactly. I did not expect this. I didn't think they was gonna do it. Mm. I, I, I did. I had no faith they was gonna do it. Mm. I did. Thank you. I had faith. I'm glad they did. Thank you. I had faith. I'm just happy that this happened because I have two boys. Who are black? And oh, really? This to happen, I'm glad it happened. Unfortunately, to someone else, so that we can get the ball rolling to try to make some progress to do right. Because that George Floyd is somebody's dad. He's somebody's son. He's somebody's uncle. It could easily been my son. It could easily been my dad. It could easily been my brother. So I'm so happy that this is this tragic turn of events had to happen for it to for something to change. So, so good to see all in all going forward. And again, um, it, it maybe does go to show that if as much as people complained about the looting and all the rioting and, you know, that wasn't obviously great. I think small businesses go up in flames. You can't really deny that some of that might have had a positive impact in allowing this verdict to come to pass. All that pressure from the community kicking doors and burning things and you know in some cases even murdering people right a couple of people died or maybe more than a couple of people died in the in the heat of all those 